Hello, it's Chris Taylor from TaylorMade RF. Today I'm going to show you how to install Base Station onto a Windows 8 computer. We get a lot of phone calls about it, so it must be causing you problems. It's very, very simple. The way I show you to do it will actually work for any version of Windows that's got the virtual store. So Windows 7, Vista, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and we've even had somebody test my method on a Windows 10 beta version. So. Um, it works, it's simple, some people will argue it's not the right way to do it. If they know the right way to do it, they'll do it themselves and they won't be watching the video. But if you do it this way, it will work and it will make it easy for you to find your base station folder to add any third party add-ons. So sit back and enjoy the next 18 minutes of me installing base station and active display light onto a Windows 8 machine. Oddly enough, the Windows 8 machine I'm using is a Bush tablet. 99 quid from Argos um, but I'm doing it on a remote desktop for two reasons one it's easy to capture the video and two it means I've got a keyboard and mouse rather than using a touch screen and getting fingerprints all over the screen so as I say sit back and enjoy the next 18 minutes of me installing base station and active display light on a Windows 8 machine okay the first thing you do is go to the Kinetic website, support and downloads, and get the latest base station CD. If you uh, click on download, you're presented several options. It doesn't matter which box you've got, we're interested in base station. So scroll down the page to the bottom and you'll find there base station CD. Right hand click with your mouse and select save as. That will give you an option to save it. In my case, it's saving it to downloads, so you save it. And once the folder pops up, you can close all the background stuff down because I'm running on a seven inch tablet, so it's quite resource hungry when you're running all these applications. And uh, I wanted to go reasonably quick. I'm, I'm doing it live because obviously I want you to keep up. So um, if you need to pause it, just pause it, it's fine. And, my oh word, one of my computers just booted up in the background. Anyway, so there we are. It's uh, just scanning. Right, there we are. So if we now select Open, you'll notice if we look at the files, they're all zipped up. And you're looking for this button up the top that says Extract. Okay, if you've got other programs like WinRAR and things like that, it might pop up with a different box, but on good old Windows, I just used, like to use its own zip utility. If you click on these now, it won't install properly, so click on Extract, and then over here and click on Extract All. Then Next, and Next, and away it goes and it extracts. <clears throat> As I say, I've, I've got a uh, 7 inch tablet with only a 32 gig hard drive and not a lot of resources so I'm really um, expecting a lot of it to A re be recording video B well I'm actually connected by TeamViewer and recording the video on another machine so I've got TeamViewer running and I've got the install running plus the machine's got to run so it's a lot of resources and while that's, extra while that's just going through um, it's worth mentioning that the biggest resource that's important to you once this is all run is the battery. So if you're going to be running a, a 7 inch tablet or something, get one of the ones with a longer life and you need a thing called an on the go lead which allows you to plug your SBS device into it. Now an SBS puck um, with this 7 inch tablet runs for about three and a half hours. The old original SBS one runs for two and a quarter hours so it's quite a significant difference in the technology used in the older device and the SPS3 also is a little bit heavier I, I think I've got about just short of three hours out of an SPS3 so um, the uh, the puck is definitely the way you go to go if you want portability anyway right that's the adverts over right so we now come down here we've got the setup so double click setup and away we go yes you want to install it And it comes up with the kinetic splash screen and a couple of other bits that it's warning you about updates, etc. Now this is the important bit, the install. Change it so that it doesn't install it in program files. So you're editing that line so it goes into C, kinetic, base station. You can put it wherever you like, but 
I call it kinetic than base station because then it's um, it's something that's easy to find when you've finished. So just let it run away and install. And here we are, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, installing away. It's quite good this technology, being able to uh, use a keyboard and a mouse on a 7 inch tablet from the other side of the room. In fact, if I think about it, if I use my 7 inch tablet on TeamViewer or a remote desktop, I can then have full screen on my 27 inch iMac and uh, it'll look wonderful. So yeah, so there's a cheap way of getting base station on the Mac. Right. So we now select finish and you can see you've got the base station, the base station reporter shortcuts plus the PDF with the instruction manual, which is worth a read um, if you just open it up on an iPad or a tablet and read it as a PDF, that'll be fine. So there we are. Right, making sure you're all connected with your puck, which I'm using. Uh, double click on base station as you normally would and be up and running. Right, first of all, the user agreement, you click, you read it and then accept. Or if you don't want to accept it, you don't have to. But if you don't accept it, then base station won't be installed. Right, so here we are, the welcome screen. Next, now it's going to ask you where you are. For quickness, I'm just going to select London airports. But the best thing to do is select the Latin long box. Go to nearby.org.uk. Put your postcode in the top and then down the bottom of the screen you'll see your Latin long. Just enter it and away you go. You confirm the device which I just did. It was a SBS puck connected by USB. It says congratulations we've installed it. It's receiving aircraft. And there we are. It doesn't take long to get it up and running. So that's that. Now next, um, Windows is just attempting to connect to the outside world via the base station so you have to do that the columns here you can customize all those I'm not going to show you how to do that you can read the uh, instruction manual and tell you how to get the best out of it um, and you've got your operator logo you might want to open up the registration column or you might want to see the registrations on the screen customize it through the settings and um, away you go so right I'm going to shut base station down for a minute now and I'm going to pop on the internet and get active display light just so that we can uh, quickly do some enhancements but more importantly show you how, where you point stuff to when you're in putting any add-ons into base station so go to the Gatwick Aviation website which is GatwickAviationSociety.org and away we go here it is sorry the org.uk but anyway good old Bing found it whoever Bing is um, right, you want Mode S, you want Active Display Light. There's also Active Display Pro, which is very useful. Um, I highly recommend it, but today I'm just showing you the freebie. Uh, put in your name and your email address. I've never, ever, ever had anything but an email um, for support with active display so don't worry about putting your email and you're not going to end up on some spammer shopping list and end up with Nike trainers and Ray-Ban glasses and everything else being offered to you it's um, it's a good website and they're a lovely bunch of chaps down at the Aviation Society right let's end the next thing is you're presented with a download you want 32 or 64 bit well, on a Windows 8 machine here's all you do you click on the bottom button at the bottom and then go and select the computer tab and then you can select system properties and there we go you've got and it's telling me that this one's a 32 bit machine so I want the 32 bit version if you're 64 bit obviously 64 and then select save or open I'm just going to open it there's, there's no point saving it I don't need it um, so there we go and we click on the application to run it yep we're going to say yes please and away it goes verifying the data and it's come up and told me telling me it's going to install 
and then it comes up and tells me that I've got features missing on Windows so it's now going to download those um, and basically that's bits and pieces in the .NET framework so um, yeah, it's going to take a while to download that anyway we'll shut the browser down and minimize our resources while it's downloading if you're not sure just leave it running and let it run its course but anyway it will uh, download and do its funky stuff Now once you've downloaded Active Display Lite, what does it do? It gives you um, outlines, it gives you new country flags if you want them to look a bit different to the supplied ones, it gives you operator logos, but more importantly it gives you a registration database that's regularly updated and um, as I say if you want to go to Active Display Pro, the full version, you pay £25 a year but you get photos, you get routing information and quite a bit more and some utilities for um, populating your database when you're not on the internet. So if you go on holiday and you see an aircraft it's got like a pocket database which you just come up with the basic information, the registration um, so that uh, so you know what you're looking at. So have a look, see what you think. There are other other softwares out there, there's one called Plainbase which is uh, gaining a lot of popularity at the moment, uh, there's ADU, there's Aerodata, Quantum and various other databases and they've all got tools that interface with the uh, base station application so well, well worth having a look around and seeing what suits you. Anyway, nearly finished the download. As I say, I'm doing this live and the reason that I'm not skipping forward is if you're watching this video and doing an install, you'll want to see it in its entirety. And yep, it's about a 20 minute video, sorry about that folks, but um, those of you that know what you're doing will skip through it, those of you that don't will uh, do it. One good thing in this video, um, I've excluded my ugly mug because there's enough shots of that on YouTube so I thought well. Uh, We'll leave that one out. Anyway, right, it's almost done. Don't close it down until it comes up and tells you that it's complete. Otherwise, you'll have to do it all again. And we don't want to do that, do we? Uh, because it's a dot .name fra dot .net framework, it's writing to the infrastructure of Windows, so it does take a little while. But um, we'll be there in a minute. Typical Windows doesn't install everything you might need, it only installs what you need and then if you need something else you have to go and download it. And there's nothing wrong with that when you're using something like a tablet, you, you don't want loads of stuff on your hard drive that you don't need when you've only got a 32 gig hard drive. So there we are. Alright, I'm just checking to make sure that it is still doing something and yes it is. There we are, so it's now telling you it's finished, so we can close that. Now just very quickly, just in case you missed it, because someone looking over my shoulder told me I glazed over it quickly, just quickly show you how to download Active Display again. So it's Gatwick Aviation Society, all one word, dot org dot uk. Gatwick Aviation Society dot org dot uk. And tap it in the top where I just did. Don't put it in the search bar, because otherwise you end up with... 300 things that you don't want to be looking at. Just pop in your name, whatever it might be. Mine's Chris Taylor, but I think I told you that already. And then put in your email address, and you have to confirm that afterwards. So, sorry about this, there's a bit of latency on the um, Team Viewer application, so it's slowing down my typing. No, you can't copy and paste. Don't know why. I was saying that's why I was trying to be clever there and copy and paste it, but uh, TeamViewer won't let me do that, so I'll do it again. Serves me right for having a long email. So. Right, and then send. We've already established that my machine's 32-bit so click on download and away you go one 
it's downloaded. Just click on the setup and say yes because you want it to set it up. And because Gatwick Aviation Society are very good programmers, they're telling you that they can't install it because you've already got it installed. Um, so that, that's good. That tells us that it all worked fine and dandy. But anyway, so there you go. That's that's where you go and download it. So now, where do you find that? If you go click on your home button and then if you just up to the top right hand corner of the screen bring up search type in active before you got to active it's come up open active display while that's loading up open base station now it's asking you where your where your base station is put in that you've defined it yourself go to kinetic and then click on base station kinetic and base station and then say OK. So you've now told Active Display Lite that your version of base station lives in the C drive in kinetic stroke base station. Right so we now open up base station. General rule of thumb when you start up start base station first and close base station first. So start base station once it's receiving aircraft start Active Display. Once you've finished with um, <clears throat> once you've finished with base station, shut down base station, then active display. And you'll see in a minute why <coughs> when you close active display it gives you an option to save your database. So here we are, here's active display and it's um, it's all the green and stuff that's been populated. I'm just gonna quickly show you how you put something. If you select logos, select E and K's and say yes. That'll install them. You should really do it with base station closed, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, just install it. And at the bottom of the screen, it will eventually it'll tell you what it's doing. It'll say, it says unzipping the files and please wait. And then when it's finished, boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, there we go, successful. Okay, close. That's it. So that's all running. Okay, so. Here we can see the operator flag column. At the moment it's empty, but we can see registration starting to appear on there. Now, if I was on my normal computer, I'd just hit F5 and it would update the uh, the operator flags. I haven't got an F5 key on the tablet, or if I have, I haven't found out where it is. So, um, rather than waste my time with that, you see what I mean, there's no F5 there. So rather than waste my time looking, I'm just gonna quickly shut down and restart the base station. And, uh, we should see things starting to happen. So there we go, base station on Windows 8, and it's working fine. <coughs> because we stopped it, it would have lost its connection to Active Display, so let that come up. And you can now see we've got some operator flags, so just click up here, Start, and then you can minimise it out of the way or just click on the outline of the base station application and that will put, put uh, active display in the background. So there we go, we've got some registrations popping up, we've got uh, operator flags. You will need to um, do all the other bits and pieces by reading the book of words, or I will do another video showing you how to enhance base station. But there we are, shut it down, it's all backed up, and that's it. So there we are, that's it. Uh, that's how you install Base Station and Active Display Lite on Windows 8 and Windows Vista and Windows 7 and Windows 10. So go install and have fun. See you again soon.